Hi again, YouTube. Welcome back. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that fragrances are... <laughs> Benny! Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that fragrances are my new hobby. So I'm going to make somewhat regular videos on this channel. It's gonna have its own nice dedicated category called Victoria Smells. And each episode I will be smelling something new, uh, reviewing it to the best of my novice abilities. Real quick before I dive into the Ellis Brooklyn fragrances that I have, there's two little announcements that I want to make. I don't know if you remember in my first episode where I was smelling all these tiny little samples, I had a Moo Moo Le Le Blue fragrance and I, I was so amazed at how much it reminded me of Pennsylvania. It just triggered all these childhood memories of playing in this empty meadow, this very green, fresh smelling smell. <laughs> I kept going back to smell that fragrance. I kept going back. I just couldn't get enough of it. And so I made my first uh, big girl purchase uh, of a full-sized bottle. Uh, a fragrance that is fresh and does not smell like vanilla. <laughs> I'm buying more mature smells. This is fresh. This is a feminine scent, but I think it borders on androgynous. So, you know, I, I am an adult and I am not just a little teenager trying to smell like a vanilla cookie. This actually triggered a whole new obsession with green, fresh smells. Now I'm on the hunt for trying all sorts of new new, green, grassy, fresh smells. That's a fun announcement. I bought a uh, grown-up perfume. And another even more exciting announcement. Uh, if you watched my first episode, you saw me talking about a smell called Salty Flower. It was a Victor and Rolf scent that is discontinued and I really, really wanted it and I was on the hunt to get this discontinued fragrance. I was asking people in Canada to get it for me and hold on to it for me. And I do have one really sweet friend. Her name is Isabel. She actually follows me on my other YouTube channel, my ballet channel, but we, we talk and we communicate. And she was able to pick up a full-sized salty flower, the last one in the store near where she lives in Canada. So, uh, you know, I sent her the money for it. She has it. It's in her possession. We're trying to figure out how I'm going to actually get it because apparently shipping alcohol-based perfumes from Canada to the U.S. is like borderline impossible because it's just not safe if it's considered a hazard, or it would be really, really ridiculously expensive. So uh, at first we joked about, well, maybe I'll just have to take a road trip and visit Canada. That joke turned into a very serious thing. My husband was like, yeah, I would love to visit Canada. Maybe we should go for my birthday. Now I think we are actually going to Canada in July to pick up some <laughs> contraband. Uh, I'm so excited about that. So excited. So I wanted to smell Ellis Brooklyn. I got the library sample set, sample packet, and I also have two others, sweet and salt. I got the salt because, you know, I was on the hunt for things that smelled salty. I was on the hunt for things that would be similar to salty flour, just in case I could never find any more salty flour. So I've been on the hunt for like salty, beachy kind of smells. Um, and sweet, I just, I just got because, man, why not? I'm very happy to purchase from Ellis Brooklyn because they are cruelty free and vegan. And I'm just, I'm just excited. Like these look, these look different. These look weird. So without further ado, let's get into it. And today I am actually going to spray on fabric. Different smells smell different on different people. 
<laughs> we all have a different body chemistry and skin chemistry. So the way that I'm smelling it on my skin may not be how it smells to another person. So I figured today the safest thing to do would to just be to, to spritz on clothes, on regular shirts. I just have a pile of sweaters here. Even though they went through the laundry, they don't have the fresh laundry smell. They don't smell like a dryer sheet. They don't smell like fresh linens. The washing machine in our apartment is actually like really, really old and musty and crusty. It's been here since the 70s. So I don't even think my sweaters get a thorough cleaning when I do the laundry. Like there's no smell to my clothes other than like a very slightly like particle board smell from the Ikea dresser that they've been sitting in. So we're gonna open this. So we have Myth Rose with two R's, Fable, Raven, Rives, Reeves. I don't know if that's a word. I should look it up so I don't sound uh, uneducated in my video. Sci-Fi, Fawn, and West. And there are tiny descriptions on the back of what the ingredients or the keynotes of each of these fragrances should smell like. So I think I'll go in, in order. I'll go from left to right, top to bottom. So the first one is Myth. Myth is supposed to smell like bergamot, cassis, and jasmine petals uh, before lingering with patchouli, musk, and cedarwood. How I get it out? Ugh, my fingernails are too short. Usually I have like long, strong fingernails where I could easily just get in there and pluck it out, but now I, I can't. I need to like, how do I get this out? I'm gonna pry it out from the side. This will be the myth sweater. Just smelling that little mist that was in the air it was like a really fresh, clean smell. That That's probably the jasmine. It's still very alcoholy, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait for it to dry a bit. It's like a little Irish springy, like Irish spring soap. Maybe a little more like metallic-y or like ozone e it smells like a dryer sheet. This smells like what my laundry should smell like after it goes through a proper wash and tumble cycle on a new, updated, efficient laundry machine and dryer. I don't hate it. Next will be Rose. Rose with two R's. Sparkling combination of Centifolia rose petals, Sicilian lemon over vanilla orchid and spring musks. Uh, I don't know what centifolia rose is, but I'm going to guess that it means a hundred petals, a hundred something centifolia, a hundred layers, a hundred layers of paper, a hundred layers of petals. It's a fancy rose with a lot of petals. That's my guess. A gray shirt. Let's let it dry. Benny, how do you feel? How do you feel about perfume? So when it was in the air, when I spritzed it and some of it went in the air, I definitely smelled rose, but like fresh roses, like an actual rose bush with green around it, like the green leaves, the green stems. It smelled like fresh cut roses. So there was definitely that uh, like almost tomato-y smell that does not make sense, but roses and tomatoes are related, I think, and it has that like round, warm, fleshy smell to it. Um, so I smelled that, but I but it also smelled fresh. It smelled like red and green, basically. Um, but now when I put my nose in the fabric, it smells much more lemony, almost too lemony, and, and I don't like too much citrus. I don't like citrus in general. I don't think citrus smells good on most people. 
citrus on me smells like sour garbage on a hot day. I think that's how it smells on most people. Like anybody that sweats, <laughs> anybody that has body odor, anybody that has a, a musky sweat smell, an earthy sweat smell, or if you're Italian like me or half Italian, uh, anybody that sweats garlic and onions <laughs> through their pores, uh, citrus just does not smell good. It, it doesn't cut or neutralize your body odor. It just adds sourness and acidity on top of it. So uh, I strongly believe that citrus smells uh, don't work on most people. The ethanols and alcohols are drying. I'm coming back to the rose smell and we're back to just roses. Um, so, uh, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I don't think this is something that would smell good on me. It, it doesn't smell like something I would wear. Next is Fable. Neroli, Petit Gren, and Honeysuckle make for a lovely intro, but the finish of crisp amber and cedarwood that adds character. That's weird. It, it smells soapy and perfumey and also weirdly a little bit licorice-y. It's not necessarily like a black licorice, like I, I could see getting this smell from a red licorice also. Like that oily, plastic, baggy kind of smell. I don't have an opinion on it. It's almost counterintuitive because it says crisp Amber. You don't expect amber to be crisp. You expect it to be like warm and soft. Amber and cedarwood, but instead of being warm and woodsy, it's like crisp and fresh. And now for some reason it's it's just kind of like a like a orange peel. Again, uh neutral. I, I don't I don't have a strong feeling about this. It's not amazing, but it's not egregious, so we'll set that to the side. The next one is Raven. Seductive pairing of peony and, or peony, as some people pronounce it, and patchouli, white, blonde woods, mandarin, rhubarb, complexity, and depth. Ooh, that, that's like sweet, spicy. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. This smells surprisingly peppery. I don't know if I smell peony or patchouli. This, this is like peppery old man aftershave, spicy. Spicy, sweet. I don't, I don't like this one. Rives, fresh yet addictively wearable combination of orange flower, lavender, petite grain, cashmere woods, and white suede. What is petite grain? Petite grain, petite grain, petite grain. Uh, that's another thing I'll have to look up. Ooh, that, that, that is like a strong masculine dude bro. That, that like reminds me of Axe body spray. That smells like my ex-boyfriend. I don't, I don't like it. Ugh. I'm getting PTSD just smelling it. Now, now it's starting to dry down and smell like dish soap. Very detergent, detergent e. It smells like detergent. At, at first it was triggering and traumatic, but now that it dried down, it, it just smells like soap. Next up is sci-fi. I've heard interesting things about sci-fi. It's a blend of green tea, pink freesia, bitter orange, and vanilla beans. 
vanilla, green tea, bitter orange, and some flowers. Ooh. It smells like sweet Earl Grey tea with a lot of milk and sugar. I guess that's the, the orange, the bitter, bitter orange and tea, green tea plus bitter orange. Uh, it's not exactly Earl Grey, but, but, uh, it works. I didn't think that these smells would work together, but it's, it's nice. It's, it's surprisingly nice. This is the first smell that I'm, that I actually like, that, 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 uh, that I'm, I'm intrigued by. I like that. That, that's a good one. Sci-fi. Okay. At least one of my shirts will smell good. Next one is Fawn. Sun-warmed skin. Coconut milk and bergamot create a delicious tension between naive and knowing. Inspired by the best coming of age novels. What? Whew, I got the coconut right away. It was a little sunblocky. That first spritz was like sunblock. Wait for it to dry. This is something that I feel like would smell better on my skin than it smells on my shirt. Because all I'm smelling on the shirt is just straight up coconut. It smells like sunblock. But I feel like if there was some of my own like skin warmth uh, to maybe like change the chemistry a little bit, it, I would start to get more of those other smells. Like the bergamot maybe. Yeah, now now it's starting to, to turn, to change. It's evolving. It feels like this shirt went to the beach. It went to the beach, but then got ready to go on a nice date. So like, she went to the beach, came home, took a shower, practiced some self-care, did her hair real nice, did her eyebrows, and now she's going out on like a nice date. I don't know why they call it fawn. Like when you, when you hear fawn, you think of a deer, you think of Bambi, you think of like a little doe in the woods. You're expecting to smell like dirt and leaves and something like that. But instead it smells like Bambi went to the beach and now is going out to brunch. And the last one is West. Inspired by 1970s Los Angeles, West is an ode to the joyful spirit of citrus, blood orange, clementine, and lemon. You heard my rant at the beginning that I don't think citrus smells good on anybody. And the nozzle is not spraying. It doesn't work. I guess we'll never know. Mm, something came out. It smells like gojo. Most of you might not know what that is. Gojo is a very um, abrasive, astringent, exfoliating uh, soap that mechanics use to get like the motor oil and grease off of their hands. Uh, my dad is an electrical engineer, but he was also a mechanic for many years before he was an electrical engineer. And one of my dad's hobbies is to rebuild and restore and repair and do any and all types of tinkering with cars. So it's pretty normal for him to have greasy, oily hands. And this is, this is the smell. It smells like cleaner. It smells like orange cleaner. I, I don't know what 1970s Los Angeles smelled like. This perfume is just, it's just straight up orange. It's just straight up orange astringent cleaner, an orange Lysol wipe or a Clorox wipe. It just smells like Gojo soap. And that's, that's all I can get out of it. <laughs> that's it. And it's not changing. It's not, it's not changing. It's not evolving. It's, it, it's orange cleaner, like, like fabuloso. D like it smells like 
what you mop a floor with. Now that they've been drying and sitting for a while, I'm willing to do one more pass and see if my opinions changed or if they match up to the first time I smelled it. Myth. Really? I, I already can't find it. Oh, there it is. Um, now it kind of smells like a, like baby powder. It has a little bit of a baby powder smell. Now that it's been sitting for a while. It doesn't last very long. Baby powdery. Still don't love it. Rose. Rose just smells like roses. Smells floral. Now that it's dried down. It, it really just smells like a fresh bouquet of roses. Maybe there's like a hint of lemon, like the hintiest hint of lemon, but it is predominantly rose and... I, I, I would be okay with smelling like this. I might, I might spritz this in my hair instead of on my skin. But yeah, the, the smell held up. It's still pretty strong. Fable. Still smells soapy. Smells like dish soap. Or like Irish spring soap. Now Raven is next. Spicy, spicy vanilla woods. It's weird, there's almost like marshmallow in there. Spicy marshmallows. Clove marshmallows. It reminds me a little bit of angel perfume which uh i don't like it tickles my nose in like the worst way um that being said it still smells very strong as if i just sprayed it so i guess it has good staying power i don't like it i don't like it i mean i'm sure this is some people's jam i'm sure there are people that Love the spicy, peppery, musky, vanilla-y, peony, patchouli, rhubarb, blonde woods, whatever. I feel like I would like it if it just wasn't spicy. Like, if it just didn't have that peppery, licorice-y smell. Like, peony and patchouli and rhubarb by themselves don't smell peppery, I don't think. I don't know if Blonde Woods is like white pepper. <laughs> uh, like where where does that licorice smell come in? Like where, like what? I would not expect this to smell how it smells just by reading the description. Next was Reeves or Rives. I don't know. I'm gonna look up that word before this video is over and see if it is a real word and what it means and how to pronounce it. Now it smells like Irish spring, but it still has that little a little bit of like spicy or peppery like Axe body spray. It, it's, it's fresher than when I first spritzed it, but it still smells like a douchebag. It still smells like like a spicy dude that I don't want to be around. Sci-fi, the first one of this package that I really liked. Oh yeah, still smells like Earl Grey. Oh, that's a good one. I really like that. I think I have a new favorite. It is vanilla-y, but it's a different kind of vanilla-y. It's, it's vanilla-y and sweet and creamy without being like a warm sugar cookie from Bath & Body Works. I don't know. Maybe it is like a cookie. Maybe it's like a like a vanilla biscotti because it has that like uh, the the orange oil. You know how like Italian biscotti, even if it's vanilla or almond, there's always like that little 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 hinty hint of like orange peel in there. It just smells like tea. It just smells like a really damn good cup of Earl Grey tea. I like it. I don't want to stop smelling it. Will it smell this good on my skin? I don't know, but on my shirt, it smells like I want to consume it. And then Fawn, remember when I first sprayed this, it smelled like sunblock? Well, I can already tell you, 
it, it has like no staying power because uh, I can't find it on this shirt. It still smells like a shirt that went to the beach. I just smell beachy coconut sunblock. And the last one, the Gojo. <laughs> it still smells exactly the same. It still just smells like straight up orange. Citrus, orange peel, orange cleaner. I mean, it's it's less astringent now that the alcohols have like evaporated. It's it's less cleaner, clean, cleanery. <laughs> It, it less less of a surfactant, but it's still just like straight up orange citrus. Real quick, let's look up if Reeves or Rives is a word, and let's also look up what petite grain is. Rive. Rive. Okay, so rive. Rives. Oh, okay. So, rive means to split or tear apart violently, um, to split or crack wood or stone. So now, now it's making sense. Uh, to split, to split wood or stone, basically, and it's pronounced rive. Rive. So, rives, I guess, wants to smell like. Splitting stones in the woods. <laughs> That's the orange flower, lavender, white suede, and cashmere woods. That is the one that uh, I think smells like Axe body spray. It smells like a dude. It smells like a douchebag. Smells like a bro that I don't want to be around. It's a little spicy. Somehow it's a, it's got a little hinty hint of spice in there. So maybe it wants to smell like a really aggressive lumberjack like a really like macho beardy lumberjack looking dude which is ironically what my ex looked like and smelled like so uh i'm gonna go ahead and say that that is very fitting uh a, a very violent masculine spicy douchebaggery ptsd ex-boyfriend smell i don't like it and now we're gonna look up what what is pet petite Grain, pet, petit grain oil. Oh, it's orange. It's a citrus. Petit. How do I pronounce this? Petit grain is an essential oil that is extracted from the leaves and twigs of the of the bitter orange tree via steam distillation. Petit grain. Petit grain. So it's a it's a citrus smell basically. So we completed the library, but I still have two more. Uh, I gotta find something else to spray it on. Let me smell my own armpit and reset my nose. I'll spray it on this pillow. So this is pretty because it's like a beach glass. It's semi-opaque. Give it a minute rock candy, like straight up sugar. Maybe like corn syrup. Because corn syrup tastes like just straight up sugar, like simple syrup. You know, corn syrup doesn't taste like corn. This definitely does not smell like maple or honey or agave. It's, it's just like rock candy that that's what i smell now just uh, all i can smell is rock candy there might be like the the tiniest tiniest hint of an orange oil in there something to like uh cut the sweetness like a little hinty hint of something bitter there's no uh description on the little box so i'm gonna pull it up on my phone real quick keynotes Pear, orris, and marshmallow. An addictive blend of juicy pear, cozy amberette, and playful marshmallow with a dash of luxe orris. I don't know what that is. Inspired by the E.E. E. Cummings poem, In Time of Daffodils. Probably the most 
accurate name of everything we've smelled today. <laughs> now to smell salt. Remember I was I was trying to find something that would be similar to salty flour in the event that I could not get any more salty flour. Let's do this blue pillow right behind me. Oof, that's that's a strong salty. And that's like an aggressive peppery salty. A man that uses old spice aftershave who owns a fishing boat type salty. There is like a spiciness and a, like a peppery, peppery masculine smell in this. This is, this is like the masculine version of salty flour. I'm actually not that pleased with it. More flowers I don't know how to pronounce. Ylang Ylang Tahitian Tiari and Ambergris. I think. Capturing the essence of salty skin, the creamy heat of the sun, and a whiff of tropical florals. Salt is sensual, complex, and soul healing. Boy, that's a leap. Oh, it's pronounced tiara. Tiara. Amber, ambergris or ambergris? Ambergris. Oh, okay. You do pronounce the S. Am ambergris. Well, I am offended. <laughs> I'm not offended, but uh, disappointed in how this salt smells. I'm going to keep accumulating so many samples, so many smells. I'm going to smell and review all of them. All right, so thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for smelling with me. I'm not headachey, but I do feel like a little a little weird, a little little stupid. I guess I've I've killed too many brain cells, so time to call it quits and I will see you next time. Bye.